cognizant of the time, and I want to give some folks in the audience an opportunity to ask some questions. So, um, <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is we've got a couple of mic runners, and I'm going to just ask you again: keep your questions concise. Ideally, in the form of a question, and um, we'll take a couple at, at a time and uh, give you both a, a chance to respond to to those to those questions, and then we'll take a couple more. So, Brenda, we've got yeah, why don't you take the, the chance, right take the two first. closest hands yeah, right there. I the yeah, first. Go for it. Hi. Um, first of all, I made I made you all talk about Mayor Harcourt, and it was so nice to be so. I just wanted to say that. And um, number one. Subway to UBC. Do not let them stop at, at our view because that would be a disaster, I just agree. congestion. So what do you what has to happen to ensure to nail down the agreements between whoever the stakeholders are, whether it's the city, the province, I think, and UBC? What has to happen to nail down a commitment to push to build the subway to UBC all the way through the first time? No phase one, phase two development, just straight through. I agree with you. I, I think Gregor is dealing with a pragmatic reality that let's at least get it to our units and do the other planning too. I'd like to do it all in one shot. Uh, frankly, you just look at the figures. The city's own figures are we're going to add 150,000 under the existing zoning from Main Street to Burrard on that part of the Broadway corridor. 50,000 new residents, 100,000 new employees. The UBC, people don't realize, uh, <laughs> and the Jericho lands, and the Musqueam lands, west of Alma, we're going to add a city the size of Kelowna. The Jericho lands are 90 acres. Uh, I'm involved with the Musqueam on their the development corporation. And we're, we've got shovels in the ground now to develop. Uh, 22 acres just to the west of the University Golf Course, uh, 1,300 uh, units of housing, a lot of it rental housing, um, and UBC is going to add another 30,000 people, 20,000 new residents, another 10,000 employees, and Musqueam, when they, 30 years from now or so, when they develop the Musqueam Reserve Number Two, you know, down at the uh, foot of uh, Marine Drive and 41st. <coughs> and Shaughnessy Golf Course, and Block K, and the leasehold lands, you're talking Carisdale by the Fraser. You know, you're talking 500 acres of land. And we need to plan for that now, and we need to have a rapid transit under Broadway, all the way to Jericho for sure, and then under Trimble Park, and probably come up at grade to uh, University Boulevard, and then it's a station right at East Mall. And Jericho and UBC, the, the, the Muspium and the others, and UBC should put aside land and charge development fees to pay for that. Mm -hmm. And the same with the city in, in, along that corridor. Because uh, it costs $50 million a station to put in a rapid transit station. <clears throat> and I don't want to do what we've done with the Canada line and the Expo line by underbuilding. You cannot expand the stations for the Canada line. Because they underbuilt, and it was at capacity the day it opened, right? So let's not do that again. Let's let's think big and bold. And I don't know how many have been uh, to New York, but this, the Sixth Avenue line, which is four tracks, two express and two uh, local, <clears throat> and we should do the same thing from United Boulevard and, and Wellington, two stops, and then a third stop at Canby or at Commercial Drive. Another stop at Camby. It's already, I think, uh, framed in. There's a, a cement station framed in at uh, where the Canada line goes by. And then the city should do something at gravel. And, you know, I, I think our beauty is going to be a local stop, maybe, <laughs> for the other, you know, the mid millennium line. But go all the way to, to Jericho with that express line, which connects uh, all the highways, all the rapid transit system. Uh, almost a uh, million points, uh, 1.7 million of the people in, in, in along it are within 15 minutes of that express line. So, so I think we've got to think big, as we've done as a citizen for the last hundred some hundred years. Yeah.
really, really great to see that, and seeing one project that extended right to UBC. Yeah. I think, you know, we've, we've, it should have happened many years ago, frankly. Uh, we're behind the eight ball with, with the Broadway quarter. To our beauty, it's a gong show that, that because of the incredible number of jobs in the corridor, uh, particularly around BGH. So, yeah, if, you know, and that's, that's one where it really will hinge on the BC government and the federal government and what they put on the table here. The federal government, we're expecting uh, a, a commitment in this budget uh, to the transit plan. So it, it, they're getting pressure from all the cities because all this is being behind across the country. So we're one of many cities that, that needs significant transit investment. And right now we, we adjusted our expectations as uh, the mayors in the region to say, well, we, we know we can get this stuff built. Uh, my sense is if we just leave the tunnel boring machine in at our units and, and at least drill the hole, uh, rather than pulling it all out and trying to clean up. Um, and, and there may be a cost-effective way to do that, but it will hinge on, on those governments. I, I think when we adopted the plan as mayors a couple of years ago, the context was Harper government that, that didn't want to put any money into transit or housing or any of the rest of it. Um, so it was a it set modest expectations given Harper and uh, Christy Clark as the leaders who, who were not demonstrating a lot of leadership on transit at the time. So we thought, well, this is a realistic package, and we actually have to get this stuff built in this next ten years, or we're in big trouble with traffic congestion and impact on our livability and economy. So that that's the that's the modest package that was put together, and we still don't have the funding for that. So. We'll see how we come through this this next cycle. Unfortunately, the, the BC government didn't make a commitment, and now they're going into the election. So we're not anticipating a commitment from the BC government in alignment with the federal government next week. Next week, the federal government puts their cards on the table, and hopefully it's billions of dollars for transit in, uh, in, in Vancouver. And we, uh, we don't know what's going to happen with the province. That's what everyone's going to have to grill their provincial candidates for. What, what are their commitments to funding transit in Metro Vancouver? That's, uh, that's, that needs to be an election issue, and mayors are gonna be out pushing this for sure to deal with it and uh, make sure that the, that the parties make very clear commitments uh, what, with what they will fund uh, the 10-year plan, and can we accelerate the work to get to UBC, to get to Port Coquitlam with, with the other end of the line, to get to Langley uh, with SkyTrain or extending that network south of the Fraser. We, we need all of the above. I think mayors will be right there at the table. We get that commitment from the provincial and federal government. We we can then we can advance it locally and get it done. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. We'll take another question.